So welcome to our last content session. Where we're going to discuss study unit 11, which is your final study unit. And then you can start preparing for your exams and so on. So today's session, we're going to concentrate on the regression. Now, it's going to be a very long session, but I will try to keep to our one hour, 30 minutes. Uh, I will rush through some of the content because I've already shared some of it with you through the recordings that, that are uploaded on my UNISA. So I'm not going to stick too much on the content so we can concentrate on more of the calculations because I want to show you in four different ways how to calculate regression questions. One, by using the formulas because you need to know how to use the formula regardless of the shortcuts that I'm going to give you, but you need to know how to answer questions based on the formulas. So it means the manual processes. Two, how to use your calculators um, to calculate the regression. Three, how to use Excel using the template that I have shared already with you. And the last one is doing the regression calculation using the functionality within built in within the Excel um, document or the Excel sheet. So without wasting any more of the time, do you have any questions, comments before we start? In the absence of comments or questions, let's see. I see there is some thing in the okay, there is nothing even in the chat function, so we can continue. So today we're going to learn how to make inferences around the correlation of coefficient, how to interpret the coefficient of correlation and how to interpret the coefficient of determination, how to use the regression line to predict a value and how to interpret uh, the coefficients of correl uh, of regression, which includes the slope and the intercept, but more especially how to calculate all of them. The coefficient of correlation, coefficient of determination, the regression line, which includes calculating the slope and the intercept. So when we talk about uh, correlation and regression here, yeah, because we're talking about two numerical values, so we are discuss or we are testing the relationship that exists between the two numerical values and the graphical representation of two numerical values is a scatter plot with um you put one variable on your um uh, one axis and you put another variable on the other axis as well on the horizontal and vertical axis so <clears throat> This is one of the example of a scatter plot. We did discuss this in study unit three when, or study unit two when we were looking at display. Uh, how do we display or generate graphs for numerical variables where we used this as an example in our session? <clears throat> so when we talk about correlation, uh, like I said, we can use scatter plot for representation, but a correlation itself, it's a calculation that you have to do to measure the strength and the direction of the relationship of those two variables. 
And these are the type of relationships that can happen. So you can either get a linear relationship when you're looking at the scatter plot, a linear relationship, whether it can be a positive or a negative, and I will explain more in detail in the later slides. Or you can get a cavalier relationship, which looks like a quadratic relationship or a, an exponential relationship. Or you can have no relationship um, of um, the two numerical variables. So when we talk about the correlation, uh, where we said it's a it's a measure, therefore it means you need to be calculating it and to calculate the the relation that relationship we use what you call, or the measure that you're calculating is called the correlation coefficient. And it's represented by R, where it will, it, when you calculate this, it gives you the strength in terms of whether is it a strong, a weak, or a moderate, or the direction in terms of whether is it negative or positive. The relationship between those two variables where your x variable will always represent your independent variable which are your uh, input variables and your x will represent your outcome or your output variable or the variables that you're going to be using to uh, at the later stage when we talk about regression those are the variables that we use to predict a value so the coefficient of correlation this is the formula to calculate the coefficient of correlation, I'm going to show you how to calculate it. You don't have to worry that much for now. When you calculate the coefficient of correlation, you will get a value. And that value needs to be between minus 1 and 1. So you can get a value of 2 when you're calculating that. Then it means you are getting something very wrong. With your calculation. So your answer should be between minus one and one. So it can either be minus one, 0 0.98, minus 0 0.68, or 0 0.39, or 0, 0 0.5, or one. Right? So if the answer you get for R is bigger than zero, then we say the correlation is negative. It means when the value of X increases, the value of Y also are increasing. When your R is less than zero, it, we say it has a negative relationship. It means when one increases, the other one decreases. And if your value of R, once you calculated it and you get the value of zero, it means there is no relationship between the two variables. So how do we define the direction and the strength of that relationship? This is how you interpret your R value. Based on the answer that you got, let's assume that your answer is minus one. Therefore, you will say there is a perfect negative correlation between X and Y, since our variables here are X and Y. If the answer is 0 0.89, therefore it falls between minus 1 and minus 0 0.79, then we say it has a negative, moderate, negative, uh, a strong, a strong negative relationship or correlation. If it's between minus 0 0.89, 7, 9 and minus 0 0.39, let's say it, you got the answer of minus 0 0.58, therefore we say it has a moderate negative relationship. And if it's between negative 0 0.39 and 0, let's assume that you got 0 0.15, then you will say it is a weak negative relationship. And the same will happen when you're uh, direction it's positive whether you get a negative or a positive you will have to state the direction by basing the answer with the sign that is in front of the r number so if you get an if you get an r of 0 0.98 you will say 
it is a strong positive correlation because it's 0 0.98. If you get a score of 0 0.38, it will be between 0 and 3 uh, and 0 0.39, which will be a weak positive correlation. And if the answer is your R is equals to 0, we know that it will be uh, no correlation between X and Y. So in terms of some of the examples of how you can identify the um, the graph or the representation, the scatter plot, and the R value to say to state um, the type of a um, relationship there is, you can use the scatter plot and the R value to state how much uh, or what does that scatter plot tells you, or what is the relationship between this X and Y relationships. And this are just another example that you can use. Okay, so we also have, apart from the coefficient of correlation, which tells you about the relationship, the measure of relationship or association between two numerical values, we do have what we call a coefficient of determination. Later on, we are going to um, calculate um, regression. A regression line. So what do we mean by a regression line? If I can come back to one of the examples that we use here, this line that we draw, that it's what we call the regression line. It's a straight line that represents the direction of your relationship. So we always draw that line and we go into calculate it. So when you draw this line, there are certain things that you calculate and there are certain things that influences the direction of that line or the output that you will get. So when we talk about uh, the regression line, we are talking about the prediction. So we, we want to predict, we want to assume a new value. We want to come up with a new value that represents that. Um, uh, uh, yeah, we want to come up with a new value that will represent the outcome when we give the input in terms of our independent variable. So for that, we calculate what we call a coefficient of determination, which is a portion of the total variation that exists in your independent or in your dependent variable, which is the, va the variable that we want to predict. That is explained by the variation in your independent variable, as in the variable that you are giving the model. So to calculate your R squared, which is similar to your R squared, is your square of your coefficient of correlation. So it means if I have calculated my R and I have my R, I can just square the answer and that will be my coefficient of correlation. So the square of your coefficient of correlation is the same as your coefficient of determination. If I have my coefficient of determination R squared, I can take the R, the square root of R squared and it will give me my R. So you can work vice versa whether you move from the coefficient of determination to R or you move from R to the coefficient of determination. However, if they haven't given you the coefficient of correlation, therefore it means you need to calculate the coefficient of determination by using the sum square measures. So R squared is calculated by using the regression sum squares divided by the total sum squares. And your R squared, which is your, your coefficient of determination, is always between 0 and 1. It will always stay positive because you are squaring a negative or a positive value, right? And it will always be between 0 and 1. So in terms of the measures of variation, like we have mentioned them there, the uh, regression sum square measures and the total sum square measures, we can use these formulas. Now, 
Don't worry too much about the formulas because I'm going to show you how to calculate each and every one of them. But I need to explain which um, this symbols. So remember, the summation is adding up. It means the sum of something. So this says the sum of your for to calculate your times the total sum squares is the sum of your observed y, which is your dependent value, minus the mean of y square the answer. So you will take every observed value of y and you're going to subtract the mean and square the answer and add of all of them, they will give you a total sum square, which is your total variation. To calculate the sum or the sum square of regression, or what we call SSR, is the sum of your estimated y value minus the mean square. So this estimated y value is what we're going to calculate when we look at the regression. Um, later on, we're going to talk about what the regression line looks like. So with the regression, you're going to estimate the value of y. And that estimated value of y, we're going to subtract it from the mean to and square the answer and add all of them to calculate the total of what we call the regression sum squares. The sum square errors, which are your uh, unexplained errors of your model, because when you are doing the model, you, when you calculate especially the estimated value, there will be some couple of errors that you get. So those small errors that are unexplained, we can calculate them by using this formula. You you can calculate how much of an error they, they are there that exists by taking your observed value minus your estimated value and square the answer and that will give you the total of your unexplained errors and these are just the another explanation of those SSTs and SSR. So SST is a measure of variation of your y values around their mean and your SSR is your variation attribute attributable to the relationship of x and y and SSE is your variation of Y attributable to the factors other than those that are given by your independent variable, which is your X. So hence your SSE are your unexplained variation. But we're going to look at the calculations later on. You just need to know all this con context or theory because you might be asked in the exam as well. So these are some of the sum square measures that we use to calculate. So for example, this is how you will calculate your SSXX. If they give you the sum square a measure of, so of X, they will give, uh, this is the formula, X sum of X squared minus the sum of X squared divided by N. You must pay attention, those two are totally different. Um, the same will apply for the SSY and this SSX and Y, which is X multiplied by Y. Um, and you can also calculate your R, which is your coefficient of correlation using the sum square measures as well. If you want, it's not a must, but if you want. And later on, we're going to use the slope equation but also if you want to use this formula you can otherwise you would just take the uh, your sx x y is just the summation of x times y minus the sum of x times the sum of y divided by n and the ssx is your sum x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n we're going to talk about this when we do some activities just now so how do we interpret your R squared? So to interpret your R squared, we state it in relation to the percentage that you get or the, the value that you get for R squared. So let's assume that our R squared is 0 0.98, or we can even write it as a percentage, which is 98%. 
how we interpret this, we would say 98% of the variation in X is explained by the variation in Y. That's straightforward interpretation of R squared. For example, when we look at this one that we have here, we have a perfect linear relationship where R squared is one. Therefore, it's 100% of the total variation in Y is explained by the variation in X. If we get, already I made use of that one example. Um, if we have 0 0.68, our R squared is equal to 0 0.68 or 68%, we can either use or refer to to the the value or we can say some but not all variation in y is explained by the total variation in in x or otherwise we can also say 68 percent of the variation in y is explained by the variation in x you can use the number or you can refer to some or more or some or less or depending on how you want to state it. But um, if there is no like 100%, you can state it in this manner as well. If your R squared is zero, oh, it means our R was zero. So if our R squared is zero, therefore the R is zero, it means there was no relationship between our X and Y value, and we can also state that the, none of the variation in Y is explained by the variation in X, or we can also state it in this way, the value of Y does not depend on X, or we can just say there is no relationship, therefore the two do not influence one another. Okay. Some of the questions that might come in the exam or in your assignment might be totally different. So you just need to be able to know how to tackle those um, questions. For example, they can give you a coefficient of correlation. In this instance, they say, suppose that the coefficient of correlation between the person's salary is this uh, and his or her educational attainment is equals to R of 0, 0,6395. And then they can ask you what is the, um, how much of this variation or what is the coefficient of variation for um, person salary and educational attainment. Therefore, they expect you to take your R and calculate your coefficient of determination. And by so, it means you need to just say, take your zero point, 0 0.6395 and then square it by just putting the square button and that will give you 0 0.4089 or 0 0.4090 if we keep it to four decimals and that will give you your coefficient of determination and how to interpret this so initially if we interpret the coefficient of relation we would say um, 63% with 63 or 64, you can call it the 64%. There is a 64%, therefore it means there is, is it a strong, moderate or weak? It will be a moderate relationship because it is between 0 0.39 and 0 0.79. So it is a positive, moderate relationship or a moderate positive relationship that exists between person salary and educational attainment. But what about how do we interpret the coefficient of determination? To interpret that, we will state it in terms of the total variation. We will say approximately 41% of the variation in the person salary can be explained by the variation in his or her attainment educational attainment, as you can see. So it means you will need to pay attention to how you define what is your Y and what is your X. 
but most of the time they will tell you what is your Y and what is your X when you are working out the question. Otherwise, then you will have to make uh, an assumption around that. Okay, so <clears throat> are there any questions before we move on to the next last explanation of the context? Content. No, no question in the chat. Uh, so it means I can continue. So looking now, let's look at we've looked at how we find the relationship, how we display in terms of graph, graphical representation of the relationship, and uh, what are the total variation that exists with when we predict something or that could influence another variable. So now let's look at how we build a regression model. So with regression, it is used to predict a value of your dependent variable, which is your Y variable, based on the value of at least one independent variable in your module you only doing one variable so we only do single variable so you don't do multiple regressions so we only gonna be talking about one independent variable <clears throat> it explains the impact of change in the independent variable on the dependent variable and your dependent variable is the variable that we wish to explain or predict and your independent variable which will be our input variable it is the variable that we use to predict or explain the uh, dependent variable we use this formula which is also called a simple linear regression equation uh, which estimate your your value of your dependent variable. So the formula looks like this. It's y hat is equals to b0 plus b1x. y hat is your estimated value that we want to estimate. b0 is our intercept. It is where x is going to be. If x is 0, therefore our estimate will be the same as our intercept. b1, it is the slope which tells us the change in the values of y as the um, as it influenced by the change in the values of x and your x is your original observation of your dependent variable okay with this regression line we are able to interpret the value of b0 and the value of b1 but the this equation also tells us the relationship that exists between X and Y. By describing it in this linear function, it also tells us that in, uh, the changes in Y are assumed to be related to the changes in your X. And your B0 is the estimated average value of Y when the value of X is equal to zero. Like I said, if we replace this value with zero, Therefore, our slope will be equals to zero and the whole site here will be equals to zero. Therefore, your estimated value will be just equals to the estimated, the intercept. And your B1, going to interpret it in this manner because B1 is the estimated change in average value of your Y value as a result of one unit increase in the value of x. So as what as x increase, what does what happens to your dependent variable? Does it increase or does it decrease? And we will look at examples on how we interpret the values, the actual values. So here is an example. A firm personnel department hires employees for a given primary job on the basis of the results of their aptitude test. 
The performance of the hired was rated on the same scale by their supervisor a year after they were hired, and a sample of the test grades and the supervisor assigned grades are as follows. So here we have the test grade of the aptitude test and the supervisor grade. Um, test grade will be our X, which is our independent. And our supervisor grade, which will be our dependent. We can draw a scatter plot. I don't have to go again and tell you how to draw the scatter plot. Your X value will correspond with the Y value. So one and four, that will be the dot, and you do all of them. So one and 13, you will do that. Five and 10, five and 10, that will be that dot. And five and 12 will be that dot that is there. And three and six will be that dot. And that is how you will construct a scatter plot. If we want to find the regression line, which is this line, we will need to calculate our regression equation, which is explained by y hat is equal to b0 plus b1x, this dotted line. How do we define it? Let's go and calculate that line. So now, to calculate that line, like I said, you can use multiple things to do that. So using a Excel sheet, we, we're going to do the example on Excel. Don't worry, I'll show you how to get there. Using an Excel sheet, you get the output that looks like this. The only measures that we're going to concentrate on, which are the outputs of this, are only those values. Multiple R is our coefficient of correlation. R squared is our coefficient of determination. There is a weak relationship between the test grade and the supervisor grade because it is 0 0.32. There is a positive weak relationship. Our R squared tells us only 10% of the variation in the supervisor grade is related or is explained by the variation in the, te the aptitude test. Okay, the ones at the bottom, your intercept is your B, B0, and your test grade will be, the value of your test grade will be your B1. So the only values that we want to use are the coefficient. You can ignore the rest of the other things that are happening on the table for the purpose of your session. So we take the coefficient and we substitute onto our equation. Remember our equation is y hat, which is our y hat is what we want to estimate is the supervisor grade equals our B0, which is our intercept value plus our B1 and our X will be the text grades and our B1 will be the test grade coefficient times the value of X. So now, based on this, we can take this equation and estimate another value if we want. For example, if we go back here, let's say we want to estimate a new value, which value doesn't, let's say we want to say the test grade, what happens when a test grade is four? So when a test grade is four, we need to go back to our equation. When a test grade is four, therefore it means we need to come here and substitute into this equation four. So we'll say 7.125 plus 0 0.625 times four. How much it gives us? I'm going to do it this way. 7.125 plus 0.625 times 4, close bracket, E equal 9.6. And we know that on the other side, it was two this, uh, one, one decimal. So we can say it is the same as 10 because the answer is 9.6.
if we round it off to 10 decimal, we get that. And that will be our y, our estimate. Now, remember we also spoke about the SSI where we had some way where some of the equation where they had y hat, right? Minus the mean squared. Or we had some way where you take your observation minus your y hat. So how do we do that? We can calculate the y hat based on our equation. Y hat is equal to 7.125 plus 0 0.625 times x, that is our estimate, we can take where we see x, we substitute the value of x so that we can find the value of y hat. So let's do that. This is now how we calculate the estimated value. So well, I shouldn't have removed that. 0 0.125 plus 0 0.625 times, and here we have 1. And the answer there is 7.78, which is 8. If I do it to a whole number, the answer will be 8. And also here it will be 8 because it will be the same. For 3, we just change that to 3. We estimate for where x is 3, the estimate says it's 9. So we put the 9. And for five, where it is five, the estimate is 10.25, which is the same as 10. So it will be 10, 10, 10, 10. As you can see, you can go ahead now and calculate. You should be able to calculate SSR, which SSR is the sum of your y estimate minus the mean of y squared. Or you can go ahead and calculate SSE, where it is the sum of your y observation minus your y estimate squared. So for the SSR, your y estimate will be the new value that you calculated. Your mean, remember, is the sum of how many they are divided by, sorry, the sum of them divide by how many they are. You add all of them, you divide by how many they are. Uh, there are 45. If I add all of them, there are only five. And therefore, your mean is the mean of y will be equals to nine. Then you can say nine, uh, nine. Uh, sorry, it's the estimate. The estimate is 8 minus 9 squared. You get the answer plus 9 minus 9 squared. You get the answer plus 10 minus like that. That will give you the SSR. To calculate your SSE, you say 4 minus 8 squared plus 6 minus 9 squared plus 10 minus 10 squared plus 10, 12 minus 10 squared plus 13 minus 8 squared plus, and that will give you the two of them. And otherwise, then the SST, you just add SSR plus SSE. You don't even have to go and calculate using that formula. You can just add the two answers. And that's how you will answer using the SSR or the sum square measures uh, formulas. That is one way of answering questions. So now let's look at another way. Let's assume that we are given the X and Y. We continue with our test score and the supervisor score. The question says determine the least square. They give us the least square formula and they are also, we need to find, let's say another option. So let's say this one, was option one was to calculate B0, option two was to calculate B1, and option three was to find out whether you know how the equation looks like. Uh, y hat is equals to B0 plus B1x, and equation and option four will be 
what is the coefficient of correlation and option five will be what is the coefficient of determination so you need to be able to know how to calculate all of them so if given our x and y table so our test scores of I've already there. Remember, this is the aptitude test and this is the supervisor score. So we were given that table. So all we just do is calculate the total, which we were not given then in the table. So you calculate the total of both of them to calculate uh, X and Y. Remember, there were some formula somewhere where you had to calculate things like sum of x, sum of y, sum of x. Um, your, there will be some way where we need to calculate the mean and all that. So you need to be able to know what those, how to calculate them. So on the total, this is the same as the sum of x. This is the sum of y. This is the sum of x and y. So to calculate X and Y, you just take multiply X times Y, you get the value, multiply three times six, get 18, five times 10, 50. And when you add all of them, you will get the sum of X and Y. To get X squared, you take your X, square it, one times one is one, three times three is nine, five times five is 25 and so on. And that will give you the sum of X squared, which is something that I didn't mention here x squared and the sum of y squared and to calculate the sum of y squared you do the same on y 4 times 4 is 16 6 times 6 is 36 and you continue and you add all of them that will give you the sum of y squared the mean remember this is the mean mean of x which is the sum of x divided by n will give you the mean of 3 the same way, the mean of y, which is the sum of y divided by n, you have 45 divided by how many there are. Your n here is equals to 5 because there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 values. So once you have all this, remember the formula for the uh, coefficient of correlation uses some of this. Remember, it uses the summation things but for now let's answer option a option a says we need to determine this equation of a straight line to do that i've repeated the table here to do that bear in mind the only two values that needs to be substituted or be numbers are b0 and b1 x and y will stay as constant as or as variables as you see them here. Yeah. The only ones where it will be numerical values, it's where you see B0, which is your intercept, and B1, which is your slope. You need to always remember that, that B0 represent intercept, and this is the slope, always, always. Slope always multiplies with X, get it? Remember that the value of your slope, if they ask you what is the slope of this equation, the slope is the value that always multiplies with an X. OK, so how do we calculate this equation? First, to get to calculate or to find the regression line, which is Y hat is equals to B0 plus B1X, we need to first find the slope of the equation. As you can see, calculating the slope, we can either use the sum square measures or we can use this formula, which is the sum of x and y minus the sum of x times the sum of y, divide by n, divide everything by your SSX, which is the sum of x squared minus the sum of x my, uh, squared, divide by n. And I said also those two are very different because the sum of x is 15 and the sum of x squared is 61. So those two mean two different things. Next, once you have your slope, you can then move to calculate your intercept. To calculate the intercept, you need your slope. 
and you need the mean of X and the mean of Y. And pay attention to the formula. This formula and that formula are totally different if you look at them, right? So you need to just pay attention to that. And the mean, you know how to calculate them. So now let's calculate the slope. We need to start there. Calculating the slope, we just substitute the value. The sum of X and Y is 145. The sum of X is 50. The sum of Y is 45. N is 5. Divide by the sum of X squared is 61 minus the sum of X squared, 15 squared, divide by 5, and the answer we get is 0, 0,625. You can take your calculator and double check, but you will see that is the same as the formula we got previously. If I can refresh your mind about the formula we got previously, it was y.125 plus 6. 0.625. So 0 0.265 was one of them, and which is our B, B1. Now let's calculate the mean. Already it's there, but just for interest sake, 45 divided by 9 is 4, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. So you calculate the mean, then you can substitute into your intercept so that you can calculate your intercept. So our intercept, the mean 9 minus 0 0.625 times 3, which gives us 7.125. And if we put the equation together, we get B0 is zero, it's 7.125 plus B1 of 0 0.625 times X. And you can also do the same. You can go and estimate the value of y by, sub oh, by substituting the value of x. And that is how you do calculations manually. To calculate r, you also can do the same because the formula is this, n times the summation of x times the summation of x times the summation of y divided by the square root of your summation of your n times the summation of x squared uh, minus the summation of x squared n, n times n times the summation of y minus the summation of y squared. So we just substitute the values. We know what from the table. We can just go ahead and substitute. It will be 5 times 145 minus sum of x and y. It's 15 times 45. N times 61 minus 15 squared times uh, 5 times 465 minus 45 squared. And the answer will be 0, 0,33227. So you can use the manual calculations. Are there any questions before I get to how we interpret the values that we just got? And from here, you can also be able to take or calculate your R squared because your R squared will just be 0 0.332, oh, sorry, 2227 squared. Take the one, the longer number, don't take the last one. Take, don't. Um, take the shorter version, otherwise you won't get the, the answer correct. And this should give you 0, 0,10 as well. So it should be the same as what you got from the table. So we know this is a moderate positive relationship. 10% of the values um, of the of the variation in the supervisor grade is explained by the variation in your test, uh, your aptitude test grade, right? That's how you interpret the two values. Interpreting the regression line, 
uh, based on, remember from the definition that we had, our B0, it's not always easy to interpret it because we know that it is when X is zero, then your, B0, your Y estimate will be um, the same as your intercept. So your, um, with the value of 7.125 will be the same as your average estimated value for Y when X, when the test grade is equals to zero. The one that is most interesting is your B1 that we should be interpreting. To interpret 0 0.625, we say since our slope is 0 0.65, this tells us that the mean of the supervisor grade will increase, which is very important, will increase by 0 0.625, increase by 0 0.625 on average for one additional one test grade or one additional unit increase in the test grade. So what does that mean? When you look at the sign in front of the slope, it will tell you two things. The sign either will be negative or positive. Negative will tell us that there is a decrease and a positive will tell us that there is an increase. So when you do your interpretation, you should look at the sign of the slope as it will tell you whether was there an increase in one additional unit because we talk about as a result of one increase unit as a result of one additional unit uh, in the value of your independent variable, or was there a decrease in the one additional increase? So you just need to make sure that you know how to interpret that. So far, what you have learned is how to use the regression analysis to predict the new value, how to find the coefficient of correlation, how to interpret the coefficient of correlation and calculate the coefficient of determination and interpret the coefficient of determination, how to interpret the slope and the intercept and how to calculate your regression line. That's all what you have learned so far. So now let's dig deep. Let's look at your calculator. I hope most of you have your calculators with you so that you can follow, but otherwise on the notes, on the video, you can always be able to follow through all the videos that I posted that, that relates to regression, including the one that we did yesterday during the session, you can check out. There is a video on the Casio. I'm not going to touch on Casio because today's session, we don't have two hours. We only have 30 min uh, one hour, 30 minutes. So I'm only going to demonstrate on one calculator. So we're going to look at the Casio calculator. And I hope you are going to be able to follow through with me as I explain what's going to happen on your calculator. We'll explain to it step by step with the demo. If you have a case your calculator, I hope you have it in hand and you can follow us. So you will notice that our data has changed. I'm using new data, but there are also still five information on this line. So the first step that we need to do is to take our calculator and put it in step mode one. In study unit, Three, when we were doing in the early stages, we 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 were using um, stat mode zero. So now we need stat mode one. So you're going to press mode on your calculator, and then this menu will come up, and you're going to press two, and this menu will come up. I will explain. Let me get to my calculator as well. I'll put my calculator on the side here yeah, so that it doesn't disturb anyone. So you're going to press mode as you if I've said it, mode, and we're going to press the button that relates to stat, which is two, and this menu will pop up, which has one up to eight. One, we used it when we were doing the 
measures of central location and measures of variation. We used one because we only had one variable. Now we have two variables and we're doing a linear regression. As you can see there, quickly on the piece of paper somewhere, remember the formula that we used, write it down. I'm going to write it down here for myself. So we said it's y hat is equals to b0 plus b1x. Why I'm writing this is because I want to make sure that when I use my calculator, I don't get things wrong. Now, on your calculator, on your piece of paper as well, right there, intercept and right there, slope, so that you don't forget. Now, the next step, we need to select two for the regression line. As you see here on this regression line, our equation is not written like B0 and B1, there is A and B. So it means our B0 is going to be referred to as A and our B1 is going to be referred to as B. And then you can write your equation like that. And now I know when I punch things, functions on my calculator, what am I punching? Is it the slope or is it the intercept? When I answer questions, I should be able to know whether I'm answering the slope or the intercept. Okay, so we're going to press button number two and this table will pop up. And the table will pop up. Now we are ready to capture the data. And to capture the data, it's easy. We're going to first capture the X values, and then we will go and capture the Y values. You need to be very careful. When you capture the values, don't mix and match. Don't mix around. Capture them in order so that you are able to know that four corresponds with five and three corresponds with three. If you mix them around, you won't get the same answer. So you just need to pay attention as you work through your calculator. So now let's capture the X value and then the Y value, All right? And I will explain the steps as we capture. So to capture the X value, we press four and we say equal, and we go to two and say equal, six equal, four equal, three equal, and we will be on five. And six is the last row on this calculator now, and it doesn't have any value. Now I want to go and capture the Y value. You use the arrow to go up, up, up until you get to one or you get to where it says four, and then you use the right arrow to get to the Y column. And now we can capture the Y values. And to capture them, five equal. 3 equal 7 equal 6 equal and 5 equal. And I can double check if I've captured all my values correctly. 3 and 5, 4 and 6, 6 and 7, 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. And I've got all my values captured. And then you can press the AC button. Your data is dot on your calculators, there will be nothing wrong. It will still be there. So <clears throat> once we have captured our data, now we are ready to answer the question whether we want to calculate our R or our uh, R squared, or we want to find the equation of a straight line and so on. Or we are asked to find the sum of X or the sum of X and Y. So, To get to the state function, we need to press this state function on button number one. It's written in orange. So we're going to press shift first. So you're going to press shift and then you're going to press button number one and the menu appears. And on this menu, you can ignore one where it says type. Two is where you store the data and press on three and three is where you will find all the sum, sum, sum measures, the summations. And if anywhere in the equation that we're asking you to find the sum square 
sum of x squared, you can see it's button number one, you can press that. If they ask you to find the sum of x and y, you know where to find it, right? But we're not interested in those ones for now. So I'm gonna go out and you go back to shift and one. Always shift and one will take you back to the menu, to the actual menu, your state menu. Um, I'm gonna skip, no, I'm not skipping. If you press four, you will see also on four, you will get one, two, five, six, uh, four, five, and seven. Only one, two, four, five, and seven you can use if they ask you. So one is the sample size, two and five, uh, the mean of X and the mean of Y and four and seven are the standard deviation of X and standard deviation of Y, right? We also are not looking for that. I was just showing you where you can find all those values. So we go AC again, shift and one, we go back to the menu. The one that we are interested in is five, which is the reg. When you press reg, you will get a menu that looks like this, A, B, R, and X with a copy, and a Y with a copy. And A is, remember, your intercept. B is where you will find your slope. R is where you will find your coefficient of correlation. And if we want to estimate a value, Let's say we want to estimate the X value, we use the estimate. If we want to estimate the value of Y, we use the estimate. Okay, so now let's, let's create a regression line. Number one, we're going to press one uh, for A. So we press one and we press equal. So you always remember to press the equal sign. I'm only going to keep two decimals. So here we have 1.6. So I'm going to keep only two decimal would be 1.66. Y hat is equals to 1.66. Now I need to go and calculate B. You just press AC and you go shift one and five for reg and we press two for B and then equal and the answer is 0 0.93. 0 0.93 and then I must put my X and there is my regression line. And the next step is if I want to estimate what will be the value of five. Sorry, when X is five. What will be the new estimate value of five? So I can go back. Now, for the new estimate value of Y, you first need to press the value that you want to estimate, which is five. And then you go press shift one, and then you go back to reg, and we're going to press five. And you will see that it will say five times the Y estimate, but, but this says I want to estimate the value of five. And when I press that, it equals to six. So when X is five and Y will be six, and you can do the same way. If I want to estimate the value of two, for example, I want to estimate the value of two, you do the same. Two is the value that I want to estimate. Shift one, five for reg, and five for the estimate value and I press equal and the value is 3.5, which is the same and because all my values are, um, are whole numbers, I'm going to say it is four. So the new estimate for two will be four and that will be that. But what if sometimes they give you the value of Y? Let's say they say Y is two. Y is to estimate the value of X. You will do the same thing because they've given you 
uh, the value of y, you just say two, shift, set, five, and remember four. Four is when you want to estimate the value of x. So you just press four and you press x and the value of two will be zero. When x is zero, the value of y will be two because 1.66 is equals to two. The next one, let's say we want to estimate when the value is four. Let's see. When x is four, oh, sorry, when y is four, we say four, shift, set, four, shift, set, reg, and four equals three. So when the value is three, x will be four, something like that. When x is three, y will be four. And that's how you use the estimate. Uh, let's find R. Let's go and find R. Let's go and find the value of R. Shift, set, five, and R is on button number three, and equals, and R is equals to 0 0.9. 93 0.93 let's go find r squared because this tells me that there is a strong positive relationship so now what is the contribution or the variation that is explained to find r squared you just press the x squared button and you press equal and that gives us 87 percent 0 0.87 so 87 percent of the variation in x uh, in y are explained by the variation in x and that's how you will answer the questions if you get them in the assignment or exam okay. so to, next week we will do more activities but i just wanted to show you how to use your calculator those who have a sharp calculator that looks like that, or they have a, a financial calculator, you can also use or follow the steps from the notes. Um, and the steps are clearly marked. marked uh, on your calculators, you, you will use alpha because all your values are visible in front, are written in, in, in blue and you can use alpha to reach for those functions. Um, your estimated values, you will use the open and close bracket. The values are written in orange. And if you watch the previous videos, you will see how you use your cash, your, your sharp calculator as well. Um, some of the questions that you will get either in the exam or in the assignment, there might be content related questions like for example how to interpret a coefficient of correlation uh, based on the value that they gave you and you need to choose which one of these statements is incorrect or correct um, you can do that we can have a discussion on whatsapp when you when you are not sure about your answer as well i want to get to where we do calculations the other one is also, you can see that here they give you the slope, which is B1. You need to be able to know how to interpret it in terms of everything that we just spoke about today as well. So we can also discuss this question later on. Otherwise, next week, we can add them to the pool of questions that we need to do. Okay. I want to use one of the exercises uh, using your calculator. <clears throat> so here is the question that we have. A random sample of eight drivers insured with the business having similar insurance policy were selected. The following table consists of their driving experience and their monthly car insurance premium paid. And they're telling us which one is your X, which one is your Y, which makes it easier. 
<coughs> for us to know uh, when we capture the data on the calculator or on the Excel sheet. I forgot to mention about the Excel sheet right now. We will do use the Excel sheet to do this exercise. So I'm going to open a template. You are al you also have this template with you. Um, I've shared it. It's under template. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight. Let me just double check here. I've got eight. So there are also some instructions on the also on the previous videos. These things are explained clearly. You can watch them and 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 check how we do that. There are instructions in terms of how you add new values and uh, ch make changes to the the Excel itself. So because there are a lot of calculations, I'm going to show you scrolling down. There are calculations at the bottom and also there are calculations done adjacent on the right. These are calculations for your slope. For the mean, for the mean of X and the mean of Y for your intercept and your, your Y estimate, your R and your R squared. All of these calculations are calculated automatically and I show you which formulas we are using. They are calculated automatically by inputting only your X and Y values. You will see that these calculations that I've added on here, they disappear because there is no data. The minute I give it data, then they will be populated. So I'm going to populate this Excel with the data that we have here. And since I have no space, I'm going to hide my ribbon. The challenge with hiding your ribbon is you cannot minimize. Lizzie? Yes. What happens if you substitute X and Y in the opposite way? So if you do X as the insurance monthly premium and then Y then, as the driving experience? Then you will get your answers wrong. Okay. Yes. You need to capture them correctly. X as X, Y as Y. Okay, so I just want to show you when you download the template, you will need to, if you're adding columns, you will need to click in the B block way under the total. You will have to select up until the K. So B block up until K. Those are the only things that you select. You don't select the total, only the values. You right click and you can delete or insert. I've counted how many records I need. They, I need only eight lines. So I'm not going to add or insert. But for you, if you only need five lines, you select all three other lines that you don't need and you just go and you delete. And it will say, do you want to shift the cell up or down? And you just say cell up. And it will not affect anything. The calculation below and the calculation on the site won't be affected. If I want to add new fields, I just highlight from column B. I also want to add only three. So I'm going to say insert. And I will say insert down because I want to insert the columns below. I'm short of one column or one row, sorry. I must just go and select one row and say insert and say down. And there I've got eight of them. The other thing you need to be aware of is to select all the other calculations above it above where you inserted and drag the calculations because you want to make sure that the same calculations are applied everywhere. Once you're done, then you can capture your data. I'm going to start capturing the X values first. So you will stand on the X column and you capture the X. Five, two, 12, nine, 
15 and you will see as soon as you start capturing with the fields where there is calculation related to that will start populating as well 6 25 and 16 and then we go to the y and 640 870 500 710 440 560 420 and the last one is 600 Just want to make this bigger. So, the data that I have now, the two, three columns that we used also in the presentation, the sum of x, sum of x, x and uh, this x and y, and x squared and y squared, I've also have them there, and all the calculations relating to the. And this will happen. So you just need to expand the column. And because this is done manually. Okay. Um, and there is your B1, there is your B0, and there is your means. And here it calculated your, uh, your X and Y. I'm just going to delete that. Your equation of a straight line, B0 minus b1 so because the sign is minus there there is the minus so it will be b0 minus 15 point which is b1 x your regress uh, your correlation of coefficient r and your coefficient of determination r squared also calculated there now, the other thing which we didn't mention is this part here at the bottom. You will see that it's not automated because also if you want to go and calculate the SSEs and SSR, you will just do the same. You will need to go and copy the data that you had. You have the if the questions is asking you to do the same, you just copy that and paste it yeah and everything will change um your estimated value it's based on it's based on the equation the regression line it takes the regression line and because i didn't have any value it was zero it was the same it was 76 because there is no other value there so I need to delete those two because they affect the calculations that we do right here at the bottom. So you just delete the fields that you don't need and there it calculates. Your, your values, your equations, and these are your equations and you can then just take them to do your calculations to see if you get the answers. But anyway, now let's go and answer the the question. Just want to move this bigger. This is just driving experience, so don't worry too much about that. And then I must scroll, 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 and I must scroll, 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 scroll because this is where we want to end up because we want to answer all these questions. So which one of the following statement is incorrect? The insurance premium depends on the driving experience. Does it depend on it? Is there a correlation? They are. Mm -hmm. 
there is a what is the what is the answer for our correlation? It's A. It's seventy seven. So it is a strong or is it a moderate relationship? But it is a negative, right? It's a negative relationship. The other thing, um, uh, our slope, remember what is our slope? The slope is B1. You need to check whether the slope is correct or not. And I can see here yeah, they're using two decimal and one decimal. So you can also change the decimals by using the number column. So I can leave everything to two decimal. So let's answer the question. We can skip one if you are not unsure about one. Let's go to number two. The y-intercept is 7666. Y-intercept is the same as B0. Is that true or false? Is that correct? It is correct because the y-intercept is 776.60, and that is correct. The slope, is that correct? You go and look at the slope answer. The slope is minus 15.48, that is correct. Number four, it says there is a negative relationship. There is a negative relationship. Insurance depends on driving. Yes, it does. Number six, it says 76% of the total variation in dependent variable is explained by the independent in. Is that true? If we look at what is 76%, 76.66, which if I convert this to a percentage, if I convert that and I make it two decimals, and I convert this to a percentage and I make it two decimals, the explanation here given is for the coefficient of correlation. The coefficient of determination, is that correct? It should state 58. 0.97 because that is the square root of or the square of 76 percent which should be 58.97 which is not 76 76 is the coefficient of correlation which tells us there is the measure of strength and direction so number is the incorrect one. So you can use the template that I just gave you. The template that I just gave you, you access to, or you can use um, the actual. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to open a new sheet and paste that on your Excel. There is a data analysis panel. If you don't have it, you go to file, options, add-ins, and there is an analysis tool pack. You click on analysis tool pack, and you click on go at the bottom, and you tick analysis tool pack, and you click OK. Once you do that, you close your Excel and then you open it up. It, when you open it up the second time, the data part, you go to the data menu under data analysis, you open it and you scroll down to where it says regression. And you click on OK and you select the values. So on your one, it will not have, as I used this yesterday, for the other session. That's why I have information in. 
So you click inside the box where it says the Y input, you go and select the Y input, including the label. You select only the values that are relevant. The X input, you also go and select your X values. You tick the labels. You're going to tick it. Your setting will be on new ply. You can use the same output, which will not put in here. You select the output range and inside the white block, you click in there and you select where you want the output to start. You ignore the rest of the other selection and then you press OK. And there is your answers. If you look at this, Is the same as what we just answered. 0 0.58 and 0 0.77 is the same as what we got on R. 0 0.76 and 0 0.58 are the same thing. If we scroll down to the bottom to the coefficients, they is 776 and 148. So you should be able to answer some of these questions. Um, the only thing which is a downfall of this is your R value here will never be negative. The value here on Excel, it's not negative, but you can look at the value you get on the slope, on your slope. If the value there is negative, therefore it means this is also negative. That's the only the only disadvantage of using the data analysis panel. If you want to calculate the correlation coefficient also from the data analysis panel, there is a correlation. But this will give you, I just want to show you what it will give you. If we select X and Y, you just need to select both of them. And you say this is grouped by columns because the, the values are grouped by columns. And you also state that everything is in the first row. I want to output it in a new uh, ply. It will open a new ply there. If I open it and there it is. So that is the only way you will get your R of negative number, as you can see there. But if you're using this um, Excel data analysis, you're just going to get the R in a positive answer. And this one gives you in a negative. Otherwise, remember, you can use your calculator to calculate. You just input the data and do the calculations. So you've got work to do. You need to practice and find the one that you feel comfortable with, whether you want to use the formulas and calculate manually. Therefore, it means on this table, you will create X squared, Y squared, and, sorry, and X and Y on this and complete it and create a total column here at the end and calculate all the totals and you will use the totals in your formulas. So find the one that you feel comfortable with. You can practice. There is no harm in playing around and practicing. Remember, if the questions look like this and they tell you that in 10 years, therefore it means they have given you an X and they want you to go and estimate the value because your amount, the premium is in rent. You need to go and estimate. So once you have your regression line, because here they didn't give you a regression line, you need to go and write out your regression line, which will be B0 plus B1X. So you will use the values that you have here, 766.6, oh, the minus, minus 15.48. X. You will use this equation to answer and substitute that there. If you used, um, if you used your calculator, remember you will just press ten and then go and do the estimate. If you used Excel, I keep on opening the wrong Excel. 
if you used Excel, which is this Excel output, if you used this Excel, you will have the equation right there. But you know what the equation, it's always easy to also, you can just say that. Has that times whatever the value you are estimating, let's say it's 10, and then you press equal, it should give you the answer. Oh, sorry, I used the wrong, the wrong values. You need to use the ones at the top, not these ones here, yeah, because these are calculations. You will use that one. That one. And you will need to use multiply by the value because this is Excel. It doesn't recognize a. Um, it doesn't recognize a a bracket. So, and that will be your answer. So I already gave you the answer for that question. So the answer is six one 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 eight four. Okay. So that's how you will answer the questions. But I've also given you some of the questions that you can use to practice. And here is another one. Here, you do not have a, you do not have the X and Y. So it means you need to use formulas. So you need to know how to calculate this SS, X, Y, which are your sum square measures. You need to go and look for that formula for the sum square measures as well as the SSX, which this I can give you the formula for. It's the sum of X squared minus the sum of X divided by N and your sum of X, um, X and Y. You also need to go and look up how do we calculate that, which is your SSXY. I might be giving you the wrong answer here, which is the sum of X, the sum of Y divided by L. Or you could say it's N times the sum of X and Y minus the sum of X, the sum of X. And you can calculate that. And that should give you the answer there. The mean, you know how to calculate the mean. SST, you know how to calculate the SST. Um, SST, you you know that SST is your SS, but there are some square measures. You just need to look at the some square measures, but SST you can calculate it using uh, your SSE plus SSR. Or if you don't want to use SST over F plus SSR, because you won't have the SSEs and SSR, you can use your coefficient of correlations. Uh, no, not the coefficient of correlation. You can use your estimate, actually, from the regression line to calculate your SS, SST. Um, yeah, so you will just use those formulas um, to calculate your B0 and B1. Uh, B, remember B1, you will use the, the equation. So B1 is the same as your SSXY over S, SSX. That is B1, which will be that value that you calculate there. And B0, which is this value, Remember B0 is your Y hat minus B1 times the mean, the mean of Y minus B1 times the mean of X. So if you have your B1, you can calculate B0. And that is that. And if you know this is the equation of a straight line uh, or the regression line, then you can calculate by substituting X into that formula and calculating that. Coefficient of correlation R, you use the formula. You 
you know, you remember the formula is that very long, you will use the sum square measures. And that is how you will answer questions like this. So you can always rely on using the templates and Excel and all that. You need to be able to know how to use the formulas and do the calculations. And that concludes today's session. Are there any questions? If there are no questions. I think we need to practice more. Yo, it's, uh, yes. I don't know. Yo, yes. It's like tough. <laughs> Definitely. You need to practice more and look at more exercises and more activities as well, especially for this one. Because also the templates are not as straightforward. Um, they, they might be a little bit tricky, but you need to make sure that you know how to use them properly in order for to support them, to support you. You also need to know during, how to use your calculator. During the exam, are they allowing us to use the strategy? Yes, they, they do allow you, depending on um, the type of exam you are writing, right? So if it's online and you're not using your phone only and the, the the thing doesn't want you to always keep on taking pictures and all that, then it should be fine. But you need to be prepared to go to an exam knowing almost that if they are not allowing you to use templates, then you need to know how to use your calculator or how to calculate things manually. Lizzie, do you know when assignment five is going to be due? Is it the thirtieth, or has the date changed? I I have no idea. I know that it's going to be open on the sixteenth. When is the sixteenth? Uh, next week on Friday. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it will be open on Friday, okay. and I don't know when it's due, but it has to be June June uh with before you, you guys start writing exams because UNISA's exam starts in October, right? Mm -hmm. So in order for them to submit your year marks and to see who qualifies for getting your timetables and all that because timetables needs to be sent. Mm. So, yeah. As far as I know, the, the subject um, is going to be online. Um, yeah, you're writing one line. Yeah, it, they it, haven't communicated that we need to be in a in a. No, irregardless, mm -hmm. you you need to receive a timetable that tells you when you're writing, okay. whether you, whether you met the requirements to write the exam or yeah. not. Yeah. Yes. But I was referring to Ntumbi. I think she was asking about templates and stuff. So, I mean, as far as I know, this is going to be an online examination. So. I mean, I know we need to kind of memorize and just know how to work these formulas, but the templates really help a lot. They keep you sane. <laughs> yeah, but also even if you're writing online as well, depending on your proctor system, if they say this is not an open book yeah, and your proctor system checks for you moving from one system to the other, it will disadvantage you. Okay. So you always need to be aware of the type of exam okay. um, and what are the implication of closing a screen and opening it again and all those things because okay. they take into consideration when you are writing exams. So be prepared, read about everything you need to read about requirements for your, your exam and prepare accordingly. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Bye. Enjoy Bye your weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.